Hi, you're back with OzBuzz, OzBuzz.ca, where today we're going to be talking about the very important subject of a reverse mortgage. You know, what is it? Well, you have a house, you have a mortgage on it, or you have no mortgage on it, which is even better. You have equity. You put a loan on that equity, then you have no payments to make until you die, and then it's paid back when you sell the house. So that's what it is in general terms. But what are the opening costs? What are the maintenance fees, if any? What are the interest fees, interest rates? What is a special insurance policy that insures the lender maybe? I mean, shouldn't forget that taxes still have to be paid. Insurance has to be paid. Strata fees have to be paid. Well, we have none better than an expert on all things mortgages in the person of Kyle Green. Kyle heads the, the Green Mortgage Corporation, one of the major players in the mortgage field in Canada. Kyle, welcome. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Well, so how does the reverse mortgage work? Yeah, so the easiest way to understand a reverse mortgage is first to think about what a regular mortgage is. And a regular mortgage is a mortgage where you're paying principal and interest. And so over time, you're paying down the mortgage and the principal balance of standing decreases. A reverse mortgage is different. You're not making a payment. So the interest is getting added to the principal. So every month, the amount that you owe actually increases. And so that's fundamentally the difference between a regular mortgage and a reverse mortgage. And uh, the, the key feature is that there are no payments every month. So could it go even higher than what the equity was? What if I lived till I'm 110? <laughs> because it's yeah. the term of my life, isn't it? So Yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's the interesting thing about uh, getting a reverse mortgage, and that's how they actually qualify you. So they look at giving you, um, you have to be at least 55 years old to qualify for a standard reverse mortgage. Um, but the older you are, the more money they're willing to give to you because it, it actually decreases the likelihood that mm -hmm. you're going to owe more money than the property yeah. is worth. And so... When they, when they map it out, they're pretty smart um, because the way that these reverse mortgages work is there is no um, uh, there's no requirement if you're underwater where you don't you don't have to pay um, pay that difference or anything like that. If, if they actually lend you enough money where at some point you owe them more than the home property is worth, that's actually on the bank and the bank is the one that claims the loss, not the individual. So you're not going to be passing this debt over to your your you know your kids and now they've got to pay fifty thousand dollars shortfall. Um, and that's where the lenders are re relatively conservative in how much money they want to lend. And in general, the older you are, the more money really willing to give to you because the life expectancy would be shorter. So less it's time. really like a no recourse. You don't have to worry about that, right? It's right. like, you know, you can lose. It's like a limited partnership. You can lose it all, but, but no more. You know, you don't end up with more. Now, there's the interesting story about this lady in France. Now, in France, it wasn't a reverse mortgage, but it was talking to longevity because she at 88 had a, a barrister and a solicitor who said, look, I'll buy your house, I'll give you the money, and you can live there as long as you live. And so um, the deal was consummated when, when she was 88, she got all the money and she kept living. And well, at, at age 96, he died. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, so there was a very convoluted uh, thing, but it was settled that now their son inherited her policy, she lived till she was 109. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so at least it did, the, you know, the, the thing was, you know, that, that that is sort of the story that where it could work. Okay, we talked qualifications. <clears throat> what are the qualifications? Yeah, I mean, the, the interesting thing is there's not a lot of qualifications other than really the age of the individual. Um, that both, um, anybody that's on the title must be over the age of 55. And the way that they underwrite the deal is they do look at the age of the younger person. And so um, mm. even if you have one person that's 80 and one person that's that's 50, um, they're looking at the 50-year-old because the 50-year-old is going to live uh, you know, much longer. And in yeah. that case, one of them is underneath 55, then, uh, then, then they're too young to get a reverse mortgage. So um, that's one key that they look at. Um, the rest of it really... Um, they're looking at, you know, determining how much money they're going to uh, to lend to you is based off of your age and what type of property it is and where it is. So in appraisal, I assume, yeah. Yep, they always get an appraisal. Yeah, so it's very property dependent. Um, but the nice thing is there isn't really any income verification necessary, so you don't have to qualify for it. So in the in the mortgage business, um, you know, it's been a long time, like over a decade, since we've had true equity lending with major banks. Um, usually for equity lending, you typically have to go to private lenders, et cetera. And there is no net worth requirement. There is no um, uh, credit on, or, or requirement on the, uh, on the income to qualify for these. And so it is an equity mortgage from that perspective, which is unique. Interesting. Is there, I heard, or it used to be in the United States, the age was 62. Is that 
Is that still the case, or is it? No, is it's fifty-five Canadian, here. It's fifty here. It's fifty-five. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the main thing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of unique ways that you can play with. Ideally, of course, if you have a clear title home, I would agree that you. I, I always feel that in Vancouver, in particular, average house price is two point three million. That's any old house style. On the west side, it's over four million, right? And people live in it and they can't pay the property taxes and, uh, you know, tell me, oh, you know, I'm so poor. So listen, you're a multimillionaire. I sometimes advise them to sell, right, and and live your money. I have a video out on it. But so there is certainly that a lot of people would be looking at, at a reverse mortgage. What, what would be some of the unique ways that people could use a reverse mortgage? Yeah, a couple of them. Um... First of all, some of the, uh, the the reverse mortgage lenders do have a product uh, that actually provides an income. So it's not just a lump sum, but they can even provide you with a thousand or two thousand dollars a month in, in income. Uh, and the nice thing about uh, pulling money out of your home is that it's tax free money. So you're not paying taxes on on this money. So you can take a lump sum. You can take it in um, in monthly amounts or you can do a combination of the two. Um, some of the cool things that I've seen is I've actually seen investors go and get a reverse mortgage on their home and then go buy a rental property with it. And so now they're in a unique spot where now they have a, another property that's generating income for them. Um, there are no mortgage payments on the reverse mortgage. So that cash flow is going right into their jeans. They also have not just their home, but they have another real estate asset now that over time you'd expect would have appreciation as well, um, which is kind of neat. And an interesting little uh, 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 tweak here or, or quirk of it is that Although you're not making payments on the loan, it is still accruing interest and interest is tax deductible. And so on your tax returns, um, you're still able to uh, to actually write off the interest portion of the payments or or not the payments, but the amount that has accrued on the loan. That um, could be considerable, couldn't it? Yeah. It could be, yeah, especially because it's going up. And so the interest is, is actually compounding on itself, right? So... Uh, I always tell people get accounting advice whenever they're looking into this, but uh, but it's kind of unique because the interest still accrues, which means it's it's technically tax deductible. What interest rate would it be? Is it is it generally a lot more than the bank? Yeah, so that's one of the cons of of reverse mortgages is that the interest rate is is uh, typically higher than a, a major bank, and so right now we'll see um, a, a you know most major major banks for a five year fixed rate might be somewhere in the mid fives. Um, a reverse mortgage is probably in the low sevens. And so you typically find there are about one and a half percent difference on the on the pricing. Um, there are there are some fees as well on, on getting the reverse mortgage. Usually the lenders have some kind of fees that work out to be about anywhere from seventeen hundred to twenty two hundred dollars for setup fees. So that would be the appraisal fees. That would be a lender fee, et cetera. Um, you may have additional legal fees. They do always make sure that you get a lawyer and then also get independent legal advice uh, just to make sure that um, that you really understand all the little nuances of, of what you're getting into. Um, so the the fees are, are you know, a little bit higher than a standard mortgage from that perspective. Um, and I would say that one of the other cons of the reverse mortgage is just that the early breakage penalties can be a lot more expensive than a standard mortgage. And so a lot of these lenders, what they'll have is if you break it in the first year, the penalty could be three or four percent of the outstanding balance, which is very high. Wow. And usually year over year, that number decreases. Now, a lot of the lenders do have some clauses in there that, for instance, if um, if the individuals move into a, a, a care home facility, then mm -hmm. they may reduce the penalty in half. Um, if um, if the individuals pass away, then they may waive the penalty uh, in its entirety. So there can sometimes be some um, some flexibility in that side of things, but the costs can be more expensive. And so it's usually not, you know, a mortgage that you're looking at redoing. It's probably the last mortgage that you're going to be getting realistically, right? And maybe you shouldn't, maybe you shouldn't get it at age 89 either, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But, it, but right? the thing is, the interest rates, of course, there has to be, the risk has to be covered. And, and the costs <clears throat> have to be looked at, but it's just such good advice. Whatever we do, get somebody help you. You know, I must I tell you, if I said to you, my dear listeners or my dear video, video crowd, and that has a mortgage, did you or did you not read the mortgage agreement when you signed it? And I would say to you right now, 99.9%, .9%, including me, we don't read it. We read, what's a 36-page document? You know, in our real estate action group, we teach uh, joint venture agreements. And I, I actually make pe people stand up and say, 
put your right hand over, over your heart and say, Ozzy, I swear I will read this document <laughs> you know, from cover to cover. And I tell them I will appear like a little green man and bite you in the ear if you don't read the darn thing, because there would be sometimes a surprise coming. But particularly where it's an instrument that is not generally uh, so common, you need an expert on it, not just anybody, but somebody that understands what you're committing to yourself to. What happens? So I die. Does the property transfer to my ears or does it get unwound right away? Or Yeah, I mean, it, it really just depends then. That's more of a uh, estate planning perspective because it depends on on how the title is registered and how the estate is uh, is set up. But it just means that um, if there is still equity in the home, then when it is sold, then, um, then that equity goes to whoever <laughs> you know, next of kin or whoever the heirs are. Um, and um, and they just look at what's the value of the home versus what the outstanding balance on the reverse mortgage is. So um, if it is underwater, then the bank is taking the hit and they're, take, they're taking the loss. So it just means that there'd be no no cash coming out of the property if that was the case. But frankly, I've seen a lot of the charts and whatnot and using an annual appreciation of, you know, maybe let's say 3% per year. The lenders are pretty smart. They don't really like to be in a situation where they might take a loss on it. And so... Um, I think that's important for them. I've, I've heard some stories about uh, back, I think it was in the 80s in the US, reverse mortgages, um, there was a, it was a bit more um, aggressive and they actually would be trying to stick the uh, the borrower with the bill or the heir with the bill and say, well, mm -hmm. you owe us 50 grand more than, you know, and, and giving these people way too much debt. And I think that that's a problem. And I think that it's much better for the lenders to be conservative with the, with the amount that they're willing to give, um, but then take the hit if there's a loss. And I know that actuaries are going to be really picky about how much money they lend out in this case so well and they have their numbers charts and they, you know that's that's an insurance game actuaries is is the word well the, the, there are you mentioned the united states i know that dave ramsey uh, who is, i think it's dave ramsey but ramsey who has a huge uh, following like millions of people and he took a swipe at tom Selleck, who was uh, representing the uh, reverse mortgage we're talking about four or five years ago and he came up with some astounding numbers, like 630,000 reverse mortgages and 90,000 of them were in default. But they were all primarily in default because people either didn't know or didn't care or were untold that they have to pay taxes and you have to pay insurance. Because of the 90,000, almost you know, 80 or 90% of them, that was the reason they were in default. So yeah. let's say you get at age 65, you get you know, say the mortgage, say you got an $80,000 payment, you spent it. But mm -hmm. you, certain costs keep going. I mean, it's, you know, you just got money out of your equity. It doesn't mean that you can now stop taxes. Or, yeah. And particularly in this new world of starter fees going crazy. And for those of you that are listening in, in the United States, starter fees are going bananas in the United States. And insurance, particularly in Florida, it's just gone absolutely wild. So all of a sudden you have still costs going on. So all the more reason that you need an expert. Is there sort of an, um, so you mentioned most of the costs. Are there any hidden fees? That, that... No, I think that just understanding what the penalties are, um, that's really important. So whenever we're going over the options with a consumer, we always like to go through, there's a few different reverse lender options out there and some of them may have a better rate, but then have a larger penalty. And so it's important to make sure that we go through all of that and, and make sure that you know exactly what you're getting into. And it's, these are not short-term solution type of mortgages. Um, if, if you need a short-term loan, okay. then there are different products available for that. Um, in some cases, just a regular line of credit is a better product. It, it can be at a cheaper cost. A line of credit um, you know, has interest-only payments, and so those are quite minimal. And one of the banks that we deal with actually allows your line of credit to la act like a reverse mortgage, where you actually don't need to make an interest payment on it. You can allow it to capitalize itself. It's just that you get a, a credit limit approved based off of your qualifications and usually it's based off of net worth at that age. Mm -hmm. um, but there are products where you can get an approval for a line of credit limit, of, let's say 500,000 and maybe you only borrow hundred grand. Well, technically you could let that go in reverse for quite some time and let the interest accumulate. And that's cheaper than a reverse mortgage. And so sometimes we do that in two stages where we say, well, you don't need a reverse mortgage yet. Yes, let's get the cheaper version uh, now, and then eventually, maybe in a decade or so, when you've started to reach that limit, now we'll put you into a, a traditional reverse mortgage. So um, sometimes it's a bit of a stepping stone type of process. But that's all the more reason you need an expert. You know, I mean, even myself, who understands a lot, I'm sort of, buff, you know, don't know all the ins and outs. In the United States, for instance, you have three kinds of uh, 
uh, reverse mortgages, you have a single purpose mortgage, which is usually it's it's government approved and government insured, but it's for low income people and it covers, you know, taxes, insurance, all of the things that still have to be paid, even though you got your equity out. Then they have an HACM sort of home equity loan on a mortgage, which is sort of the usual that that's uh, it's most common. And then they have a proprietary loan where you can go for higher limits, but much higher rates and so on. So clearly, just those three things, just to, your eyes gloss over as to what would I qualify. And in Canada, as you, you mentioned, you have different kind of aspects to approaching. And I think what you just said, this strategy of using your mortgage uh, to the best advantage, maybe through a home equity loan, makes a lot of sense. Any other advice you have for yeah. one more one more unique uh scenario in case we see we see especially in um areas like vancouver or toronto and the prices are quite high is we're seeing that this is becoming a early inheritance tool so the parents have a lot of equity tied up in their home but they still got a you know 20 years left or 30 years left in their life and they have children that want to buy a home but it's very very expensive to buy in in these markets um now a lot of the time people would love to gift their their kids some equity or give gift their or their kids some cash to help them get started but maybe they don't have a lot of liquid assets and or they want to keep their money in the retirement funds um, and if they were to borrow money against their home now they'd have a payment and they can't afford that payment either um so one of the strategies here is well instead of waiting 20 years and then they get the whole house totally paid off and they don't really need the money at that point because now the kids are, are much older uh, instead this is a, a different way where you say, well, if the kids are going to get the equity in the home anyways, why don't you get a reverse mortgage on the property? There's no payments. And then that could be a gift to the kids who then get to buy their first home. And maybe now they can do 20% down. They can qualify for a bit more. And sure, the equity in the home that they uh, will eventually inherit will erode over time. Well, at least they're earning equity on their own home that they are now able to purchase instead of continuing to rent for an extended period of time. And it kind of kickstarts their life. So I'm actually seeing that's a really, really common strategy right now, too. That is a common strategy. You mean to say a lot of people are doing it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Interesting. But that's what I mean. That's why you need an expert, and certainly an expert like Kyle Green and his company of experts. Thank you very much for taking the time and lifting the fog on reverse mortgages. And certainly look below. If you're looking at this video, look below and get his contact information. And if you're listening to us on podcast, we are on Spotify, on Amazon, on Apple, or wherever you like to listen to the podcast. The podcast uh, information, if you want to get a hold of Kyle, just go to ozbuzz.ca, O-Z-B-U-Z-Z.ca, and we have Kyle's information on Ozbuzz. Thanks, Kyle, and have a great day. And all of you live your life large. <laughs> Thanks, Aldi. Bye.